Hey everybody, welcome to the week. How are you? How are you? We are doing a couple things this week. We are doing the Chiron class backed by popular demand. Um, we did close this class last time. There were so many people who were part of it, so we decided to do it again. Chiron is the part of your birth chart that shows you uh, the place where you have been the most wounded and the medicine you need to bring to the world. So that's what Chiron is. It's about healing something in yourself, and then that's the thing that you need to um, make available for other people, how you can heal other people. So a lot of you empaths have been asking me about how to do that. Chiron is an excellent place to start. So that's happening this week. Also, um, we are going to be doing a class uh, in December. Uh, if you purchase this, my tarot deck this month, then you're going to be invited to this tarot class. Now, I teach a big tarot class, but this is a live specific class around reading for yourself and reading for others and how to separate yourself out so when you're reading for yourself, you're not getting jammed up with you know any kind of blocks or any kind of wishful thinking all right how do i remove that from when i'm reading tarot for myself and how do i do it for other people so that i know i'm getting a clear message that is the tarot class that we'll be doing early in december so grab yourself a, a mary Jo tarot deck and you'll be invited to that for free okay all right you're always welcome to take the big tarot class but this is a very specific topic all right, let's see where we go. This is for whoever, if you're drawn here by the title, then this is for you in some way, shape, or form. The whole reading doesn't have to be for you. It can just be one or two sentences, a phrase I say, something like that. That's my intention. I will also go deeper into this reading in the extended, which you will be invited to if you want to do that, okay? Um, there's a link below for all the ex for my extended for this particular reading, not for all the extended. All right, let's see where we go. <sighs> okay, let's see where we go. Flexible. Hmm. <laughs> time for a nap. Aw, oh, we're out of phase here. It's a little time for a nap and happy, happy. Beautiful energy here. I'm just seeing like things are getting, things are getting easier. Okay, things are getting easier. You're allowing yourself to take a break. You're not feeling like you need to be pounding away at something all the time. And I feel like that kind of let up, right? Like you're releasing, you know, sometimes when you, mm, you're like, I've got to do this or I've got to get, right? This is an energy of resistance. You may not think it is because we have a value around that in our society about like, keep plowing ahead no matter what. But I feel like there's um, a little voice inside you that says, you know, just relax. Okay, just relax. Happiness is coming in, allowing things. Yes, yeah, so I'm getting huge spirit chills on that one. So just be, kind of go with the flow a little bit more. Okay, instead of being... Um, you know, I plan to do this on Monday and, you know, how other people have been interacting with me and the energy of it. I don't, I feel like a little bit overwhelmed. Maybe it's not a good day to do that. Okay, whatever that is. Page of Swords, we'll talk, I'll talk you through this whole thing. Seven of Pentacles, Fool, Ace of Pentacles, oh my goodness. King of Swords, World, Queen of Swords, wow. Nine of Pentacles, Temperance, Five of Swords. Oh, my, 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 my. Um, my overall impression of this is that you're seeing how you've been doing things is antithetical to where you're going. And what I mean by that is that if you feel like, like what I've been saying about just like pounding away at something, you know, if you're not productive toward it, does that make you feel nervous? Do you feel like I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing? You know, like something like that. But I almost feel like releasing and letting go, allow new ideas to come in, allow opportunities to come in. Um, I feel like the continued drive and pressure uh, for a particular thing. Now, this could be around twin flame. This could be around a relationship, meaning 
Um, if I'm not 100% in their view all the time, if I'm not texting them and here I am, right? If I'm not doing that, then they're going to forget about me. It's actually the opposite of that. If you're doing that, if you like, oh, well, you know, I got to keep this going. I've got to, I've got to, you know, make sure that they know I'm here and I, and I'm interested. If I stop texting, maybe they think I'm not interested. I feel like that is going to push somebody away. If you keep down that road of, you know, here I am. Hey, what about today? Hey, hey, good morning. Like constant texting. because that's not what it's doing. I feel like whatever you're putting, applying too much, like it's, it's about over the top, too much effort into something is resistance, okay? Now, I feel like this is how you've always done it. And so the idea of learning a new way of, of being or learning, a new, learning to release and let go and let go and let God and trust the universe, I can hear y'all going, um, uh, well, uh, uh, I'm, I, you know, have to put in effort. I can't not put in effort. I almost feel like the effort that needs to be put in is more around allowing, more around I need clarity rather than just push, push, push forward on what I'm doing up until now. And I feel like you have done a lot up until now. You've put in a lot of time and effort, but it's time to really uh, let that stuff germinate. So if you have, you know, if this is like you've been putting a lot of time and effort into your business, a lot of time and effort into um, your job or and nothing seems to be moving, then try stopping doing that. It's like, well, that's how I was taught as a kid to like keep putting in effort, but it, we're talking, um, you're more in the flow of energy now, okay? And you're also moving from an old paradigm about how things get done to a new energetic paradigm about how things get done. So, you know, for God's sake, let's do that. <laughs> let's not continue like, okay, I'm awakened, I'm, al I'm alive, I'm open to this idea of energy working things, but you know what? I'm going to still be super duper like push, push, push. That's not, that's not it. <laughs> I am wicked simpatico with that. Okay, I'm just saying to you, like, try something, try something else. Because that push, push, push isn't going to get you where you want. So instead, you know, being free and letting go and allowing the universe to bring it in, bring something in that you're manifesting. I'm really looking for some success. I'm really looking for. What's the answer? You know, do I, if I start my new business, do I start it this way? Do I start it that way? Oh, I'm just going to do everything all at once and completely burn myself out. Okay, so that's not what you want to do. Instead, I feel like the, you're kind of looking at this ending and new beginning. And I like this. You may, there may be somebody else here. It could be a Sag, an Aquarius. I see, let's see, Sagittarius. Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, Aquarius. Okay, so that's the fixed signs. And the fixed signs are very much, um, Sagittarius is not a fixed sign. Sagittarius is a mutable sign. So the answer is um, be flexible, allow for a different approach. And I think you're seeing that King of Swords and Queen of Swords, the feminine and the masculine, about how can I integrate my energy in a balanced way, feminine and masculine, as I move toward the future. The push, push, push is all masculine. Feminine is the allowing. So it's really asking you to do a better job of, of balancing these things. What's underneath is when you do that, you see how she has, um, you know, this coming into her crown chakra and just electrifying her. It's like the universe now has space to speak to you. That's what you're making. You're making some space for the message that wants to come through. And part of it is the doing of it. You know, like we think of being a, a doing person or a doing, but you're a human being, be, right? Be, just be. No need to do right now. I think the clarity of, oh, I, I spent so much time and effort into this that I'm not listening. I'm not giving, I'm not making space 
for any new information to come in and that's what really needs to come in right now. So the universe is working on it and this will give you um, some self-confidence because it's going to show you that your manifesting has been working instead of like This reminds me of, I know, I know this is a little bit of a, of a weird tangent, but it reminds me of like Christmas Day where there's so much, you know, in an abundant Christmas, there's so much that you kind of like run over the joy of each individual um, moment in time on that day. Um, you might rush to get to a certain present you might rush to get to the dinner because you're cooking the dinner. You might rush. And so you're missing a lot of the other stuff. You're missing a lot of the joy of the people around you. You're missing uh, the conversation that you have with your grandmother and, you know, and she's getting on and you need to take some time with that instead of rushing through. OK, so there's something about that. There is something about grandmother. There's some kind of message coming from grandmother for somebody here about like, you know, it's not just stop and smell the roses. It's like, enjoy the look of the rose. Enjoy the sun on your cheek as you're looking at the rose. Enjoy. Each individual mindful moment is what's being asked of you. Now, I'm going to clarify this because this five of swords, I feel like my intuitive, you know, this is intuitive tarot. So um, my intuition is sometimes overriding the meaning of a card uh, based on the context of the reading. And to me, sometimes this is manipulation, okay? If you have people around you who are, um, you know, cold and calculating, okay, all right, I guess so, or people who are too strident or stuck in that path, and you're the one who's releasing and freeing yourself, okay, I can see that. But this makes me feel more like you are finally getting clear on something enough to shoo away the stuff that's getting in the way. All right. Other people's nonsense, other people's ideas, other people's thoughts, other people's needs, whatever it is. It's like you're not putting yourself first enough. And that's what's being asked of you here. Um, I feel like that's what's being brought in here. And the idea, right, we got King of Swords and Queen of Swords, the idea that putting yourself first, putting your needs first ahead of other people um, may initially feel like a selfish act to you. But what you're doing is you're taking care of yourself in order to be available to them. Because if you're not taking care of yourself, if you're not, you know, what is self-care? If, so, if you are, you, I, I think this is a good exercise to do. So here you go, a little journal prompt for you. Um, what is my self-care routine or what is my idea of self-care? There's plenty of people who I've asked that question to and some of the answers come back like I'm trying to escape from my life. It's not really self-care. That's an action that you're taking. You know, intention matters. Intention matters, right? If you're taking a nap, if you're slowing down, if you're, you know, doing that for the purpose of taking good care, that's self-care. If you are going, if you're like, oh, I just want to pull the covers over my head and not do what I need to do today, that borders on um, escapism, right? That's not really what self-care is, okay? So I, I think that's a good way to look at things like, I want to create self-care routines in my life so that I can allow when, you know, when love comes in, I'm ready. I'm ready for that. I'm ready for that. Okay. So I'm going to continue on and I'm going to look more deeply at this. Like I said, the fixed signs are here. Fixed signs are also like, I'm going to do what I'm going to do. Doesn't mean that Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, or Aquarius are doing that. But that's fixed signs have a good uh, tenacity to them, right? They really do. And then there's Sagittarius here, which is about sort of bringing in something new, exploring, being excited. So let's take a look at those signs. You could be dealing with those signs, or this is being this is the energy asking you, hey, this is something that it's time to incorporate. Okay, Sag, Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, Aquarius. 
Okay, if you want to continue on with me, the link is below. I'll uh, go deeper into this reading and I'll see you over there.